Hello friends and beautiful people. It's Catherine and I'm finally alive. <laughs> um, it's been an interesting morning. Internet's been going on and off all day. So I wanted to go live a bit earlier, but I couldn't because I had no internet. And now, and when I was ready to go live, <clears throat> I'm not kidding, we're having a windstorm here. When I was ready to go live and the internet came back up across the street, the landscapers came and were using a leaf blower in a windstorm. I don't, I struggle, I struggle to, to grasp what goes on in people's minds sometimes. I'm watching them, half incredulous, half hysterically laughing, watching them as they use the leaf blower and scattering the leaves and the dropped pine needles and then just come right back in. And they were out there for an hour. I, I just, I can't, someone's paying them by the hour for that. So there was that, that was my morning. So after that, I gathered myself <laughs> and I said, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe the universe in its a divine wisdom and its ability to see all the moving pieces said, you know what, you're not going live at 12.15, you're going live at one o'clock Pacific because that's when people are gonna be watching and that's when it's going to work out better. So fine, I'm willing to flow with that. So gather round, beautiful friends, gather round. I wanna talk about creating a negative vision and how you probably don't even know you're doing it, how to stop doing it, how to kind of redirect that energy, repurpose that energy behind a negative vision and talk about the difference between a new earth positive vision and an old earth negative vision. And which one has staying power and which one doesn't? And I bet you can guess already um, hi, Annie! Hello, hello! Um, and, you know, I want to I wanna frame this right off the bat by talking about, um, I'm going to be calling some things out in this industry. Not because I want to do it to be contrarian, not because I want to crap on anybody or what anyone's doing, um, but it, it, does, it does need addressing. And I know I'm not the only one, but we speak truth to power when we call something out from integrity. I've had many parallel lifetimes because there are no past lifetimes, everything is now. But I've had many parallel lifetimes as a whistleblower. And so guess what? In this lifetime, I'm a whistleblower too. I've been a whistleblower in my own family. I've been a whistleblower um, in this industry before and I'm going to be a whistleblower again because there's something that needs to be called out for exactly what it is uh, in this industry and where I feel we've gone astray a little bit. So I'm not going to say anything like trigger alert or stuff like that, but I am going to be calling some things out that are, I think, pretty toxic in this industry, in the spiritual marketplace because it is very much a marketplace, a very saturated one at this point. Hi, Barbara. Hello, whoever is joining. Let me know that you're here. And if you're watching later on, hashtag replay. Thank you. Um, but I am directing this call. The, the information here is, is good for everybody who's manifesting and creating something new, you know, taking you through the end of this year and also going into 2023. This is geared towards helping you shift your energy towards creating a positive vision and away from creating negative visions, but it is geared directly towards spirit-led visionary women because as part of my renewed mission statement and purpose-driven, passion-led, passion-forward um, values in my business, I'm working with spirit-led visionary women who are creating their life's work from a place of being passion-forward, from a place of... STO, which is the service to others paradigm, which is 
completely aligned with New Earth. And so I'm speaking specifically to those women out there. So perk up your ears, grab yourself some water or some tea, get cozy by the fire with me, and let's chat. So first off, what is a negative vision? Let's talk about that. So when we are formulating something that we want, we are desiring something and we want to create it. We want to bring it in to physical form in our reality. And at first it exists as an energy, right? It exists as an energy and etheric impression. Desire always starts that way as an impression, right? And it really always comes from a place of how we want to feel always and ever. And from that, we, we tend to build out a vision in our minds and say, okay, well, I want to feel like this. Um, and we can go deeper than the initial feeling. Say you want to feel wealthy, okay? You want to be wealthy. What you want to feel is wealthy, really, is what you're saying. And you say, I, I want to I call in my soulmate clients. I want to be wealthy. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do in my business, build retreats, and not have money be something that hobbles me, holds me back. So what you're really saying when you're, when you're like, I want to be wealthy is I want to feel the freedom that wealth provides, right? We got to get to that nugget there that's underneath it all because it's always a feeling. And when we start to understand how we build out a new timeline for ourselves, new timelines are always anchored into 3D reality through the emotions. And if you've gone through my timelines expanded masterclass, you know this because we tackle this concept and this premise right away. But it is emotions that anchor a new timeline, always and ever, because that's how 3D reality works, okay? We are the keepers and the creators of 3D reality, humans, and we create timelines through the emotions. Those are, those are the anchors, the anchors, okay? So when we're desiring something, we wanna manifest something, we wanna create it, it exists as a feeling first, right? And when we create from a feeling, that is always our cue to understand, well, where is this feeling coming from? Hi, Tiziana, nice to see you, thanks for being here. So it's an opportunity for us when we create a new desire, we're trying to manifest a new level of reality, some improvements, more beneficial outcomes in our lives. Yes, we need to go to that feeling. What is the feeling? But where does that feeling really come from? And this is where we get into whether we are creating a negative vision or a positive vision, okay? So a lot of times, and I'll give you examples from my own life, and I'm willing to throw myself under the bus here and use myself as an example for really driving this point home. But when we're creating this vision, we want to create it from a place of purity. We want to create the desire from a place of desire for desire's um, own expression. Not a desire that attempts to compensate for where we feel incomplete. Okay, so I'll give you an example. When I first started on this journey and uh, long ago, and this is over 20 years now that I've been doing this work, but when I first started my first YouTube channel, okay, terrified, I'm a total introvert. I'm an introvert that loves people, okay, but I'm actually quite a recluse. <laughs> um, because I do crave peace and I like my own company. There it is. But when I went on YouTube, I was so wooden. I was, I was terrified. And then when I loosened up a little bit and started doing my teachings, I was just doing 15 minute videos. I was talking about worry. I was talking about the energy and the, the useless output of energy that is worry. Um, I was talking about forgiveness. I was talking about um, ascension. I was talking about ascension um, on YouTube before a lot of people were really talking about Ascension. And it was, as, as per usual for me, a place where I was talking about things where people weren't really addressing these things yet and stretching people's consciousness because that's what I'm here to do. 
And it felt scary. It felt really wide open. I felt really raw and really vulnerable. And then I started to realize, hey, I want more of this because I really, really like people listening to me. My whole life, it felt like no one's listened to me. And then I, I started to get in the groove with it a little bit more, established a little more poise, a little more confidence. Those of you who are watching me on camera right now are like, wow, she's kind of got this down. It took a long time. <laughs> it took a long time for me to get here and get comfortable, you know, speaking on, on a camera. And I really liked, as I started to evolve with that, people would invite me to do podcasts. People would invite me to be part of their summits. People would invite me to, to speak live in, in some of their groups. And I really loved it. And I said to myself, hey, <laughs> I like this whole people listening to me thing. This makes me feel important. This makes me feel like I'm vibing really high with confidence. And then one day, as my spirit team is, is known to do, set me straight and said, uh, in no uncertain terms, my spirit team is very, very blunt with me because I tend to be very blunt in my life. So that's how we communicate with each other. And they said, you forgot what this is all about. It's not about you. What you're speaking about, because I am an embodied conscious channel, so a lot of what comes through, I might have notes and things that I read, but as an embodied conscious channel, I'm letting information come through me rather than from me. And that was true whether I was doing a YouTube call or, or, or um, live or recorded session or doing someone's podcast or you know speaking live in someone's group or being part of a summit. I'll have notes, but I usually let the information, actually most about 85% of the time, let the information and the wisdom just kind of stream through me. I let it live stream through my vessel. And that connection to source has only gotten stronger over time because of that realization that it's this is bigger than me. This is bigger than my need to be seen. This is bigger than my ego's need to orient itself to an identity that says, hey, no one listens to me. Hey, no one sees me. And so what I was trying to do at that point was create my business and, and drive the evolution forward in my business from a place of a negative vision orienting what I desired to my ego's needs rather than to what the soul wants. It's quite a difference. Vibrationally, two different ends of the spectrum. The negative vision is aligned with a service to self, old earth paradigm based on what the ego needs. A new earth positive vision is aligned with the service to others paradigm. It is aligned with not only benefiting you, but it doesn't end there. And it's certainly not the complete picture. It is also meant to, in a much more profound way, benefit the greater good of humanity, benefit the human family, Drive the needle forward on the evolution of this planet based on a paradigm of service, not servitude, service. And so I remembered in everything that I was teaching and in the, in the courses and the programs that I was teaching, I started really looking deeply at, okay, where am I driving this forward by, ooh, people are, are gonna love me for saying this instead of, ooh, people's lives are going to be really enriched by this. And so I went, every, went through everything in my life and in my business, in my life's work, because my business is my life's work. I can't imagine doing anything else with my life at this point. Uh, taking on a regular job, what am I going to do? Talk about timeline insertions in the false matrix while I'm flipping burgers at the in and out? <laughs> this, this is my life. This is my, my vision, my business is my life's work and I can't imagine doing anything else. This is not something we're going to retire from, okay? So I started looking at everything in my business and going through everything in my life and my work with a fine tooth comb and extracting anything that wasn't, you know, pure of integrity in the sense that this is built into 
and align with the principles of the service to others paradigm, which is unity consciousness, which is what we are striving for, which is what we are pushing that needle of evolution towards on this planet. Those of us who are here saying that we're doing that, that's what we're here to do. It is about service to others, okay? And even when I was teaching my courses and my programs, I was like, I love being listened to. I love being visible this way. This is fun. I've got more and more people joining. That means more and more people want to hear what I have to say instead of, this is more and more people I get to help. This is more and more people I get to serve. This is more and more people who get to then take that energy that they're now filled up with and get to spread that out like seeds on the wind out to, the, to their communities to influence their direct field of influence. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. This is really big stuff that we're talking about when we're talking about the service to others paradigm. And so when we're creating a negative vision, we're not really plugged into that. We are plugged into the service to self paradigm because we're trying to create desires from the ego's needs. And so when we are saying, I want to be wealthy, and what you're really saying, you can get to that nugget now, well, I want to feel wealthy is what we're really after here. We're after the feeling. However that shows up in the 3D physical reality world of form could be any number of ways in order for us to feel wealthy, right? But we equate it with dollar signs, money in the bank, fabulous trips, um, maybe wonderful clothing, <laughs> fancy cars, um, affluence, right? the symbols of wealth, the symbols that represent wealth, the, the emblems of wealth, right? When it could actually be many, many things, but ultimately the feeling you're after is freedom. However, that shows up or looks in the external world. So when we think about, well, I wanna create freedom, what you really need to be asking yourself is where don't I feel free? And you may wanna do a quick life review and an, and an inventory of when it started to feel in your life that you did not feel free. This could have been an imprint or an impression that you had as a very young person. That, um, I, you know, I remember some of my earliest memories, uh, my family putting stuff on layaway. Does anyone remember layaway? <laughs> did anyone shop at Kmart when they were kids? So back to school stuff, winter clothing, especially if it meant we had to get because um, there were four kids in my family, so that meant that we had to get winter coats, winter boots. Um, and my brother and I, my older brother and I, are very close in age, so, you know, we had to, my parents had to get stuff for us at the same time. And um, our birthdays were around the same time. And I remember a lot of things being put on layaway, which meant always, and instilled and impressed on me this, this feeling very early that, you can have this, but you're going to have to wait for it. It's not something you can have right now. And not that, not that everything needs to be immediate gratification, because I think that that's something we suffer from in this world, and especially when we're trying to create a new earth. It's not going to happen overnight. So a lot of us are getting very impatient with that. But the immediate gratification and creating new earth, they don't really go together. But the, the extremely delayed gratification that I had as a kid impressed on me this point that like, we just don't have enough money to get stuff now. We've always got to wait. I've always got to wait. Um, the things that I want are denied me. I'm not allowed to have them. I'm not allowed to have this. I'm not allowed to have that. I can't afford it was an anthem <laughs> for our family. Okay. And so that didn't feel very free, right? And having a business and trying to grow and expand and scale a business, well, you think, of course, you know, I want to scale because I want to have more money. Well, why do I want to, why do I want to have more money? Well, I want to be more free. Why do I want to feel free? Where do you not feel free now? Instead of, well, if I had a new earth positive vision around money, I could look at, all the, the charities that I could actually contribute to 
without feeling like I have to hold back or budget it and just be able to do it freely, to be able to build scholarships, to build every single program I offer, um, a scholarship into that, um, being able to create things in my community that I really care about, making sure that, hey, kids have school lunches in the summertime when school is out, um, things that I wanna to contribute to to make the world a better place because my greater overall overarching mission statement is I wanna leave this world in a better place than I found it. And so there are little ways throughout my life that add up over time and compound over time to do that, to fulfill that mission. And so wealth to me, now that I look at it through the lens of a service to others paradigm, is about sharing it forward, paying it forward, being able to know that I have more than enough and so that I have more than enough to give, okay? And that's what freedom is to me in the service to others paradigm. But before when I would look at that and say, well, I don't feel free now, I feel poor. I feel contracted. I feel like I never get to have what I want. And it's, it's you know, this little version of myself saying, I want it now. Why can't I have it now? Why do I always have to wait? Colleen down the street always gets what she wants and she gets it now. Well, they have more money than us. I don't care. I want it now. And so we can orient our vision and our desire to an ego need that feels like it's never going to be met or never has been met. When we are driven by what the soul wants and the soul wants unity, the soul is constantly giving you cues and clues about how to harmonize fragmented parts of self, fragmented parts of life, fragmented parts of the world. If that information is coming in all the time in little drips and sometimes massive downloads. But we really don't know what the soul wants or the soul desires until we're fully consciously aware of what the ego needs. And what the ego needs is a very strong energy because it's been built up and it's been compounded over time since we're very young, since we were tiny humans. And so it's usually, mostly, the strongest energy within us. And where does our attention go? Where does our energy flow? To whatever is the strongest energy within us. And often that is ego-driven, based on the needs that aren't being met. And until we fully get conscious and aware of what the ego needs and how that's driving our desires forward in a negative way, constantly driving us back into the service to self paradigm, we can't really know what we truly desire. We can't really tune into the energy of what the soul wants because it's a subtle frequency, but it is just like the ego is a programming running in the background all the time. So is the soul information. So is soul wisdom. which comes through your intuition, right? Because your intuition is the agent of your soul's, of your soul speak. So where are you creating something right now or hoping to create something, trying to manifest something that is driven by an ego need? And a lot of times, and I told you I was gonna call this out, you know, what, the, the women who are doing spirit-led visionary work, the women who are doing coaching and mentoring in the spiritual marketplace, I'm seeing a whole lot of ego-driven need driving programs, offerings, services forward. And I'm not in judgment of it because I understand that everything is a process for everyone. And I came, I came through that cycle as well. So I can't really have any judgment about it. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't be an integrity because I had to come out of that cycle too and come around and be able to see what's really going on and be able to really listen into my, what my soul wants, what my soul is telling me. You're here to, to do this. You're here to be in service to the service to others paradigm. You're meant to drive your work forward through that scope. 
And so I see it a lot. And there's a, there's a whole lot of talk in the spiritual marketplace about, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like an industry that is cannibalizing itself. That's how I see it. Coaches training coaches who are training coaches who are training coaches who are training coaches who are also training coaches. And a lot of the teachings are create impact, make more money. Okay. That's not the end of the conversation though. Um, making this conversation in a spiritual marketplace constantly refer to money. There's nothing wrong with talking about money. There's nothing wrong with money. I like money too. I want money too. But when we keep gearing the conversation of moving the needle forward on the evolution of humanity, but the, that conversation keeps going back to money about how we're going to evolve, we need to stop ourselves and we need to stop what's driven behind the money. Somehow, somewhere, we lost the vision. We lost the new earth positive vision, which is driven towards service. And I'm just going to call it out and say, talking about money is sexy. And it drives your marketing and your promotions forward. And it does make people enroll in your courses and programs. Talking about service to others isn't sexy. It's not. People are like, wait, I'm going to do this just to, to benefit other people's lives. Well, what about my money? <laughs> what about what I need? And here's where we're, we're making a huge mistake. You know, we're incorporating coaches, teaching coaches, teaching coaches. And then the message is the underlying foundation of the message about how to drive impact forward is like, let's all make a whole lot of money. And I'm not shitting on money. Money is great. But I'm talking about where we're getting the message wrong. And then we are cultivating and fostering as coaches and mentors, more and more people into this field, more and more people into the spiritual marketplace who are also talking about money and making that the bottom line and making that the goal and calling it impact and it can be if it's a, from a place of purity and integrity and aligned with the service to others paradigm as I used in my example earlier it can be but a lot of times and I see it more and more and more and I'm not judging it I'm just calling it out for what it is where we make it the goal to just teach each other how to make more money. Where did the messages go about unity consciousness? Where did the messages go about being kind and compassionate to humanity and building each other up and supporting each other and, and leadership through sisterhood? And I see a lot of competition and comparison in the spiritual marketplace among women and I'm, it's staggering how much I still see it. It's staggering. And it is a, a pretty toxic blemish on, on a marketplace and a, a niche of this marketplace that seems to be paying lip service to supporting other women. And then I'll see women turn right around and talk shit and smack about each other. That's pretty ugly. Where's the leadership through sisterhood? Where's the support? Where's the mutual exchange of nourishment? Where is the service to others? And we're talking about it in our marketing, but that, that gap is widening between those who are here delivering from a service to self paradigm and deriving their manifestations, their creations, even their programs towards a service to self, old earth, ego need driven vision that gap is widening between the, that camp and the camp that's really here to, to, to talk about service, to really talk about like, what does that look like? When we color that in, because we've just got kind of black and white outlines of what unity consciousness is. And so it's like we have this beautiful coloring book <laughs> with all the colored pencils and all the watercolors and all the paints and all the crayons 
We got the jumbo deluxe pack of the Crayola set, right? And we get to color it in and fill it in. Except a lot of the teachings out there aren't really coloring it in and filling it in. They're not lending to a kind of perceptual diversity where we, yeah, we can talk about money, but we got to talk about the other stuff too. What does support really look like for each other in a service to others, new earth positive vision paradigm? What does that really look like? How do we really build that out? What's the feeling behind that? What's the drive behind that? What are the emotions that anchor that? What are the emotions that expand and sustain that? Because when we're talking about a new earth positive vision, we are talking about staying power. And even though talking about service isn't sexy and maybe it doesn't sell programs like hotcakes in the way that talking about wealth and making millions does, but here we are, and this is what's in front of us. We're not creating more of the old earth paradigm. That timeline is already fizzling out and collapsing that's why, you know, you look at the world and you're like, so many things are not working out but because it is built on a lack matrix paradigm and all of that stuff that's aligned with that has to collapse. It has to dissolve. It has to fizzle out. And it's painful. All these things that aren't working out, the, the, the structures and the systems that are all breaking down, it's painful because the collective human identity is so attached and plugged into those structures and systems that says, this is who we are as humans. This is who I am as a person. Of course, that's painful as that dismantles. And the fact that it's dismantling and going away pretty rapidly and at a very accelerated rate is just testament that this all has to go away before we can really create a foundation of something new, something much more beneficial and wholesome that benefits the needs of the many rather than the needs of the few. And those of us who are aligned with the service to others paradigm, and we are not just paying lip service to this in our marketing and our promotions in the programs that we might gloss over and say are all these things, but when it's actually delivered to someone, it's pretty empty and pretty hollow. And I'm seeing that too. That has no staying power because it's driven by ego need. Therefore, it's plugged into the old matrix. It's plugged into the false lack matrix. It's plugged into old earth, which is dissolving. It's collapsing. That doesn't have any staying power if you're aligned with that. What has staying power is new earth positive visions. So again, to recap, creating a negative vision means you are attempting to create to manifest something, to bring something into your reality that is based on an ego need, that is based on your ego's identity of, this is my list of incompletes. This is where I don't measure up. This is where I'm unworthy. This is where I'm invisible. This is where I'm poor. This is where I'm, I'm impoverished in mind and in my bank account and in body. This is where I'm, I don't measure up. This is where I'm incapable. This is where I don't trust myself. So I'll create something that I hope to compensate for where I feel these things instead of addressing the problem, well, you're not unworthy. Instead of addressing the problem, you're not invisible. And really addressing that problem is you're not invisible necessarily in the outside world. And so you're taking that impression and saying, well, no one sees me out there, so that's my reality and I have, to, I have to work to unwind that. No, 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 no. It's never outside in, it's always inside out. You feel invisible or unworthy in the outside world because there's you, a big part of you that's not willing to see all of you. You feel unworthy because you're still going off in ego's need to find your worth whatever that means. And it could be wealth, it could be power, it could be affluence, fame, recognition, encouragement, a pat on the back, someone telling you you're all that in a bag of chips. Where you don't feel it's showing up in the outside world is an ego need inside that you have never addressed. It's shadow that continue exists beyond the light of your love, beyond the light of your acknowledgement, beyond the light of your acceptance. 
And until you sort those ego needs out, those things that create the sum total of your list of incompletes, until you address that and get honest with, okay, I feel invisible. Why do I feel invisible? Why do I feel like no one sees me? Oh, because this happened to me when I was a little kid and then it became an imprint for me to say, you know, no one sees me. I feel invisible. I don't matter. No one listens to me. My opinion doesn't count. I might as well not be here. That's what's projecting forward and a need to maybe posture yourself as someone you're not in order to get more clients so you can satisfy and compensate for that ego's need of feeling invisible or feeling like no one listens to you. And I, I see this driving so much forward in our spiritual marketplace. And again, I'm not judging it. I'm, I'm calling it out because we have to address it. We have to say that this is there. And it's not just in the spiritual marketplace. We're doing this when we're creating a vision for our lives. We're doing this when we're trying to manifest new desires. We're basing it off of a list of where we feel incomplete. That's not pure. That's not wholesome. And whatever you manifest from that place, and you can manifest from that place, we've been doing it. <laughs> we've been plugged into a, ma a lack matrix on this planet for thousands of years. So we've been manifesting from this place for a really long time. So you can do it. But for where we're going and the next step for humanity, creating from that level does not have staying power. It is not a manifestation and creation that can be sustained in new earth because it's aligned with a lack vibration and that is a vibration that is not supported in new earth. So this is an opportunity to go through your life with a fine tooth comb, your business with a fine tooth comb. And in this lens of viewing it all, being in this perspective of, of the higher vantage point of, okay, a new earth positive vision has staying power. A new earth positive vision is based on a service to others paradigm. It's not that you have to throw away your manifestation. It's not that you have to scrap what you're trying to create. It's about changing the energy around and, and moving the energy into a higher vibrational state that supports a vision that this is really going to drive something forward in humanity that is great. This is aligned with what I call, and I've been calling for years, the God choice. That which is aligned with my highest and best good, aligned with the highest and best good of humanity, and with the least amount of resistance involved. And that, that key last piece is really important. Because you always align with the least amount of resistance for your manifestations. When you roll into whatever you're creating, the rest of the human family, or it could be even your immediate community or field of influence. Those people who are like your core group of people who sign up for your programs and courses, that core group of people, or your soul tribe that you want to sign up for your programs and courses or your offerings. Or if you're not in, in business, those people that through your work and showing up in a place of joy, showing in a, up in a place of a positive vision for humanity going forward, that's infectious. That's contagious. That benefits the greater good of humanity. Haven't you ever been around a person who's like, hey man, you look like you're really killing it at life. You look like you're really happy. You just have a smile on your face all the time. It feels good to be around you. Yeah, that's part of the service to others paradigm. Staying in your own lane and creating the momentum by thinking positive thoughts about yourself and your reality treating yourself like your own best friend, that's infectious, that's contagious, that builds up your vibrational frequency, that builds up your field, it ripples out. It transmits from the heart in a really positive way to benefit others around you. That's definitely part of the service to others paradigm. So you don't have to be involved in business or be um, leading a business, be an entrepreneur to be able to adopt this and pay this vibration forward in a sense. And here's the thing about the least amount of resistance for all involved. When you're doing that, 
when you are driven by and constantly redirecting your energy towards the service to others paradigm, aligned with compassion and tenderness and kindness towards humanity, forgiveness, because we're gonna do, we're gonna have a lot more fuck ups before we get it right, <laughs> before we get this energy right and get unity consciousness dialed in. We're gonna fuck up a lot. Are you willing to forgive your brothers and sisters in the human family for that? Because that's aligned with service to others paradigm as well. And when you align more and more of your energy to that, you get supported. The universe always shows up to collaborate, to co-create with you. When you are in the frequency of a service to others paradigm, meaning you're making it bigger than just you. You're making it bigger than your ego's needs. You're not constantly trying to compensate for the ego's identity of I am poor, I am unlovable, I am invisible, and creating all your creations and manifestations from that. When you switch the energy around, you say, I want to create this because I know this is going to create an impact in the world that benefits the lives of many. And for, you know, ripple, a ripple effect of beneficial outcomes that can be sustained over time, that can compound over time. I'm after that. That's juicy. You will always be supported in that. Meaning, you will get everything that you need. That's not being talked about enough. When you align your goals, your visions, your creations, your manifestations, even your courses, your programs, etc., whatever you offer, however you serve your community, if you align it with how this is of the highest and best service to the many, to the one all, you will get the support you need. And it'll show up in pretty miraculous ways. When you're constantly driven by the service to self paradigm and you're constantly going back to this feeling of, I gotta, I gotta get mine first. I gotta get mine first. And there's, there's nothing wrong with being supported first. You have to be supported and nourished first, but that's not something that comes from outside of you, not really. It can show up to align with that, but it only shows up and aligns with support and nourishment if you are giving that to yourself first. Because you, in your life, by yourself and for yourself, are the instrument of source. We, we think of, of source and all the support that comes with that, that just, it drops down from somewhere or it shows up in our external reality. It shows up in how you talk to yourself and how you treat yourself. Do you love yourself like your best friend? Do you positively talk yourself through your day because every day we are talking ourselves onto our path. We are talking ourselves to our greatness or we are talking ourselves to our victimhood. How are you talking to yourself? That'll tell you right now how supported and nourished you are. It's not something external. What shows up externally will only match the vibration you're holding internally. It's always inside out, never outside in. And so part of that service to others paradigm is knowing that you are deeply supported and nourished. You are, and you can tap into that abundance anytime, but it has to be a choice. It has to be a conscious decision and a movement of your will to say, I am abundant, I am supported, I'm nourished. Look at all the things that are going right. Our cognitive bias based on the ego's needs is usually gearing us towards all the things that haven't shown up yet, all the things that are going wrong, all the things that are not working out. Meanwhile, you're drawing breath. You got clothes on your body. Maybe you could be watching me naked and that's fine. <laughs> Hopefully you're sitting in a house somewhere or a car that you bought with your own money, that seems to be working out. There's always something to be grateful for. That's the easiest, next highest vibration to reach towards is gratitude, appreciation. And even if you've been depressed for a long time and things you feel have not been working out for a long time, 
there is something to reach for to be grateful for. There is someone that loves you. There is someone you can reach out to. There's, there's always a place where you can go to be listened to. Always. But you may not be asking for that based again on maybe some ego needs about not being worthy or not feeling visible or feeling unlovable. And you're gonna have to sort that out and be responsible for those feelings. And really look at that shadow. And creating this positive vision, being service to others, paradigm oriented, new earth positive vision oriented, when you're doing that, every little thing you do, you, you are looking at it through the lens of, how does this go beyond me? How is this bigger than me? Just by asking that question, you are hooking into and tapping into the service to others paradigm. You are tapping into a new earth positive vision. You are tapping your manifestation, your creati creation's desires into the staying power of the new earth paradigm. Because that's what's in front of us, folks. That's where we're headed. And some days it may feel like we're just recreating the lack paradigm over and over again. We're going through a lot of consciousness loops, but they are dissolving too, trust me. And the veil is very, very thin right now. The veil between dim dimensions, the veil between densities. Um, there's a lot of really permeable membranes of timelines that are overlapping and braiding and weaving into each other, it's all super thin. So all your shit is coming up, all of it. All your stuff is right there in front of you. You can't deny it. And that's because these gifts in the garbage that I call them, it's the universe saying, here's what you need to work on. Here's exactly what's holding you back. Here's exactly what's keeping you from seeing you are abundant, you are prosperous, you are supported and nourished. But you don't believe it because you're letting this veil completely cover your vision. It, it's an overlay. But once we start to consciously address it, we realize how actually flimsy it, it is. We just thought it was really big. We thought it was controlling our lives only because we've allowed that. And with this veil being really, really thin right now, the other gift in the garbage is that everything I'm talking about here, you're probably already seeing what I'm talking about, where you might be operating from this, this mindset and this, this level of mind and this level of being that, oh, I'm trying to create this desire because I, I'm trying to create wealth because I feel poor. And that makes me feel full of lack. You're not full of lack. You're allowing yourself to believe that and anchor into that belief. I want a soulmate partner. I, I want to marry my soulmate partner and have this kind of life and all of these things. Why? Not because you desire it for desire's sake and because that's what your soul wants. Because you feel on some level you're not allowed to have it. Oh, I, I want... Oh, I want all my soulmate clients to, to sign up for my lives and I want hundreds of people watching my lives and I want, you know, thousands of women signing up for my programs, my offers and my freebies. Well, do you want that because you really want to serve at that level and create that kind of impact and, and drive forward this vision of betterment for all those people that you are touching in your world, all those people that you can impact with your message. It's because you really want them to have a better life and to evolve and impact the lives of the people that they're sure to influence. Or is it because right now you feel invisible? Do you want all that because you feel like no one listens to you? Do you want all that because right now it feels like you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall in your business and nothing's working out? Hmm. And right now when the veil is this thin, we get to look at all this stuff because there's really, it's, it's, it's wide open. And so when we do this, the more that we extract these pieces and start looking at all these fragments that we've created, where we've separated from source, 
by thinking I'm unworthy, I'm unlovable, I'm invisible, I'm poor, I'm, I'm filled with lack. I'm never having, I'm always wanting, never having. To the degree that these beliefs are driving your life forward, you are in service to your ego's need. You're not in service to humanity. You're in service to your wounding. You're in service to a story and a narrative of yourself that is ultimately not true. It's a misperception. It's a falsehood. It's aligned with the fast, false matrix and it's aligned with a level of thinking and a way of being, especially if you keep going back to these thoughts and beliefs, that are not part of your vibration anymore. You just think they are. In the last three years, we've all coded higher. We've all elevated in vibration, even though it doesn't feel that way. And it doesn't feel that way because you haven't allowed your mind to upgrade into this frequency. You haven't embodied on such a level where your thoughts and your feelings match this new frequency that you're in. And it's just habit. You keep going back to these old feelings and these old thoughts because to be honest, they made up a large part of your life, but it's a past outdated outmoded version of you, but you keep dragging it into the present by saying, well, this is me. No, it's not. That used to be you. And that's a past impression of you. It's not a life sentence. And it certainly isn't the version of you that can take you into new earth because any vision of self, any story or narrative of self that's based on lack and unworthiness is simply not a vibration that is supported in new earth. And anything you build or try to create or manifest that is in alignment with those ego's needs, those ego needs is just a measure of trying to compensate for an ego story that isn't true, hasn't been true for a while, is certainly not going to be true going forward and holds no validity for you. And it's like a square peg in a round hole. We keep trying to make it fit. And we wonder why all these things in our life aren't working out. It's because you haven't realized that you are stepped up. You are up leveled into this higher frequency, but you're not acting like it. You're not embodying it. You're not behaving like it. You're not acting accordingly. You're still dragging your past into your present and saying, well, I don't know why things aren't working out. Really? <laughs> really? You do. And if you could stop kowtowing to the ego's needs and you don't want to shut it down, you can't kill or slay the ego. I don't care how many times you've heard this thrown around or this idea bandied about you can't kill or slay the ego and you don't want to. Moving into unity consciousness is about harmonizing. It is about including. Including everything as part of the experience. It is about perceptual diversity. So we can still perceive from the ego, but we have to keep it in check. And it needs equal billing on the marquee of our life. Ego, soul. We're here to harmonize these things. We're not here to ban or punish or shun anything. We've done that as part of the lack matrix and we can see where that's gotten us individually and collectively. We're here to include. Don't try to kill the ego. You can't do it and you don't want to anyway. Harmony of unity consciousness is about harmonizing all parts of self and the parts of self that have been fragmented through the ego's needs, through the ego's woundings and trauma, they're just asking to come back home. And until you bring them back home and back into the light and include them into your experience, you'll continue to feel fragmented and you'll continue to throw spaghetti at the wall in your life and in your life's work and wonder why nothing is working. Include it, include the shadow. That doesn't mean that you live at the level of shadow. That means that you say, Whatever you are, shadow, that is presenting yourself to me, you are existing beyond the light of my love. So where can I love you? How can I love you? How can I serve you? What do you need? And that level of appreciation for that shadow, that love for that shadow, believe me, it's always waiting for you to say that to it. 
It's always waiting for you to pay attention and appreciate it. And when you invite that peace back in, you feel whole. It's never that you're not whole. You are whole already. Your soul is whole. You are a whole person. It's that we don't feel whole. And we don't feel whole. It's because there's a part of us, maybe many parts of us, that don't want to invite the shadow back in. We don't want to include it. We don't want to say, you know what, shadow, either you can be my strongest adversary or you can be my most powerful ally. In my whole life, I've been choosing to have you be my strongest adversary. So what if now I invite you in and I love you and I understand that the reason you're there is because you're actually a really, really strong part of me. You're actually really powerful. You're actually very resilient. You've got staying power. And I want that in my life. I want resilience. I want strength. I want staying power. But the way we've been having a relationship before has not been beneficial for either one of us. So I include you. And I include all the good things that you represent. Protection, because your shadow is a form of protection. Absolutely. And what's protection signify for you? Love. Anything that's trying to protect you it's trying to keep you safe. It loves you. It understands that you deserve to be around. You deserve to survive whatever adversity comes your way. You deserve to keep going. So whatever shadow exists at that level has been there to protect you, to try to keep you safe. What if you invite it in, include it, and say, we're going to take all the good things that you represent and use it towards driving this vision forward. Believe me, your shadow wants to be repurposed. <laughs> it wants to be repurposed. It wants to come back in and be good, positive energy that aligns with love. And here's the thing, and we forget this. When we understand and can truly live in alignment with what our soul wants, we're understanding something that's much bit bigger as a foundation that everything comes from love and returns to love. And anything in the middle that departs or fragments from that is just contrast. So that we can know the power of what love really is. That's why we're here. To understand the power of contrast, to understand the power of du duality, to understand what it's like to live without love or to lead a life, to lead a business, to be in a relationship with ourself or others without love. We're here to play with that. This is a giant sandbox. It's a giant playground. The 3D Earth Mystery School is that for us and we're graduating from it or we're not. Some of us won't graduate from it and that's okay because some of those souls agreed to be that level of contrast for us. The people who will never embrace self-love, the people who will continue to embrace victimhood, even the people who are here to do like serious harm to humanity, and this is a hard thing to wrap your head around, agreed as souls to come here and be in contrast. To exemplify and to show to the rest of us what it's like to live beyond the light of love. And that's a hard, hard thing to take in. I still struggle with that. And years ago, um, this message came through in a channel transmission years ago. It's over a decade now, and I still struggle with this. And I do share it and I talk about it. Um, but my human is like, no, <laughs> I don't want to totally believe it. But uh, this truth hasn't changed in 10 years, that, that transmission, that some souls are just here to be the contrast. But that's loving too. That's service to others as well, willing to, just willing to play the villain. And some souls chose that on this planet so that others could see it exemplified and say, oh, I don't want to be that. I choose love. I choose to feel that I am returned to wholeness. So, even though it's not sexy <laughs> or glamorous to talk about service to others and to create offers and services from that 
I, I, I can't be in purity, authenticity, I can't be genuine, I can't be in integrity unless I'm talking about that in how I drive my work forward. And I have a history of stretching people and I have a history of having some staying power in this business and having a reputation for talking about things and sharing things before it was popular to do so. Um, Timelines Expanded Masterclass. When I first started teaching this, there's no one teaching that. Tackling in, in many, it started off as a humble five module program and now it is a 12 module program. There's still no one teaching this in such a comprehensive way. And when I first offered it, just a handful of people signed up and it really stretched people. There, I've had people who have come since the beginning when I started teaching this program and keep coming back because every time people up level into a higher frequency expression of themselves and they come back to this material, they glean a new piece of wisdom from it. They're able to extract more information that can meet them where they're at or they're in a frequency level where they can meet the information where it's at. Might be a better way to say it. And I'm, it, it's, it's still taking me some time to, to settle into this idea that I create things that stretch people and I often put things out there and I create things for people before they know they need it, before they even know it, they want it, before they can even grasp the idea that it benefits them or how it's going to benefit them. And I'm never going to be comfortable with that, but I'm someone who wants to keep growing and evolving. And I know that comfort is not something that is <laughs> that goes hand in hand with that comfort and growth. And I get that. I completely grasp that and I accept it. And that I'm here to stretch people. I'm here to be of higher service. And that means talking about service. And that means driving my offers and programs and services forward from a place of deep service to others, new earth, positive vision paradigm, not driven by my ego needs. And does, do those needs still crop up? Yes, but I'm able to identify them and recognize them and reconcile with them. So it doesn't become a bias in my work, in my life's work and in my life. It, ha it has a place. And I can deal with those ego needs in a more constructive and positive way than I ever have because I'm able to call them out more quickly now, especially off of a seven month stretch, a five and a half month stretch of doing serious shadow work and peeling away lots and lots of layers, lots of gifts in the garbage. And I know that I'm going to go forward and continue to offer things that people will look at it and, and it won't make sense to them. Um, they'll try to figure it out and then scrap it because there'll be a bright, shiny object over here. And it's like, oh, but this course, this person's offering this and I'm going to make all the money. And no judgment. But I'm not here to do that. And yet, sure, I talk about money in my programs and offers, but that's never the end of the conversation. It's more about service. It's more about showing up in the energy of how does this drive humanity forward? And when we're coming from that place and it is, it is pure, it's authentic, you will be supported. That is guaranteed. Hands down, you're going to get everything you need. You're going to be supported. You're going to be nourished as long as you hold that vibration within you, that you are that, you are that rescue. You are that level of support and nourishment. You are that because you are the only instrument of source and the only vehicle or filter for source. That's all you know. You might think of source as maybe God on the throne in the sky, but really what is your experience of that? It's a filter that you created within your own mind or your own vibration of being. Source is you. And so if source is you, of course you're supported. Of course you're nourished. 
Of course you're abundant. You are all of consciousness. You are all of source experiencing itself through the energy of Dina, through Tiziana, through Barbara. You are the only source that you know because you have no other filter of experience than you. Does that land? And so until you truly know that, and I'm not talking about believing that because beliefs change like the wind. Knowing is aligned with what your soul wants. So the more you anchor into things that you just know, I know I'm deeply supported and nourished because I'm showing up every day in my thoughts and how I treat myself and how I behave and how I act in the outer world in ways that support me, that nourish me, that constantly redirect support and nourishment back to me, back to me, back to me, so I can be filled up. And I can really only be in a service to others paradigm if I feel like my needs are met. I'm filled up. And that's not driving your work forward from ego need. That's actually making sure that you know you're deeply supported and nourished. When you know that and you accept it as pure truth, the way you tend to show up in the world is with a lot more confidence and courage and with a lot more service at your disposal. You feel like you're limitless. You feel like you're boundless. You can do all the things doesn't stop with just benefiting and nourishing and supporting you. If you're more than nourished and supported for yourself, you're going to pay that forward in how you act and behave and show up in the world and deliver your great work too. It's just a guarantee. It's a foregone conclusion. So where are you right now realizing that you're creating from a negative vision? Where do you want to be able to mine that deep resource that exists within you? It's never left you, it's always been there. Of knowing what the soul desires, what the soul wants. And driving your life and your life's work forward from that place of desire. Because that's authentic, that's pure, that's genuine, that's in integrity with the service to others paradigm. And it's a new earth positive vision that's created from that place, what your soul wants. And some of us need to go through a process of remembering. As this veil is very thin and all of our stuff is coming up, we tend to pull back a lot more from our highest soul perspective and we tend to go deeper into the ego rabbit hole. And this is only going to continue to ramp up through the end of the year. Um, my good friend Romina uh, brought up something a few weeks ago and after she did it created just kind of like a and I, I knew it but I didn't consciously make note of it yet and she said we're not just wrapping up at the end of this year 2022 we're not just wrapping up the year of 2022 we are wrapping up 2020 we are wrapping up 2021 and 2022 all in the culmination of this year's timeline and that's why everything feels so intense um, but you know, the, the cosmos, the universe source is helping us out by having the veil be really thin right now. So we can see all of this stuff that needs to come up to the service and be wrapped up to culminate, to finalize. So we can finally, finally collapse it, dissolve it, be done with it saying, that's not me anymore. That was an old representation of me. That is a previous version that is outmoded, outdated, no longer viable. We need to be able to consciously signal we are done with something, with a way of being, the way of thinking, a way of feeling. We need to consciously make that declaration of no longer available for that. I'm going to close out that timeline and then be done with it and then be unwilling to dip our toe back in there because some of us are addicted to our old ways of being. I'm just going to say it. And so we can reopen timelines. We do it all the time. So we have to be very careful of being very good stewards and custodians of our thoughts right now. And in your day-to-day -day thinking, how you treat yourself is how you talk to yourself. And so you may be thinking, well, I'm creating a positive vision. I'm creating a positive vision. Okay. And I would say, really? 
How are you talking to yourself? Are you putting something out there and saying, no one's, no one's buying? See, I was right, I am invisible. And we're so habituated to maybe going back to that way of talking to ourselves, we don't even know we're doing it. We don't even know we're doing it. So pay close attention to how you're talking to yourself, how you're treating yourself by how you talk to yourself. And is that in alignment with the vision you say you're creating? Because you're gonna have that much more of a need for this thing to work out in your outer reality because you keep going back to this way of being or way of feeling about yourself that's been with you for a very long time and saying, but this is me. So the energies don't match. Ooh, my ears are ringing like crazy right now. <laughs> so the energies don't match. If you keep saying to yourself that you're a failure, if you keep saying to yourself, see, this is just like before, I knew it, God damn it, I knew it. And then, boop, 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 but I'm creating this and it's happening, I'm bringing this in. And the universe is like, wait, who is she now? A minute ago she was that. Now she's trying to be this. I, we, uh, we, we're throwing up our hands, we don't know. What vibration do you want? You're going to have to choose. And when you keep orienting yourself to an old way of being, dollars to donuts, I'm betting that you are orienting yourself and your desires to your ego needs instead of what the soul wants, what the soul desires. So I'm inviting you to remember. So remember a minute ago, I was talking about creating something and often creating things in my business that people don't even know they need, that people don't even know they want, that it's not out there, or there's nothing that looks like that. And I'm content, I'm not comfortable, but I'm content with having a vision for my work where I stretch people, where I'm willing to bring things into the physical reality world of form and introduce concepts and premises to people before they're even in the vibrational level to fully accept it or have it land with them. But I work with people who are curious. I work with people who are willing to stretch. And I would have never had anyone in my Timelines Expanded program if it weren't for the fact that I happen to call in through my vibration and magnetize through my frequency those people who are willing to be stretched, who are willing to say, well, this doesn't make sense to me and I can't figure this out, but I'm very curious, <laughs> I'm very intrigued. I wanna see what I can get out of this. I wanna see how this works for me because there's, there's something there. And, and that takes a level of trust. And so I do work with people who have that kind of trust that like, I don't know what this is gonna do, but there's something there and I'm interested. I know I'm gonna get something out of it. And I think that's why I have some people who come back time after time into my programs and courses because they're like, I, I know I'm gonna get stretched. I don't know how this is gonna look. I don't know how I'm gonna look. When I'm done with this, I don't know how I'm gonna feel but I know I'm gonna be stretched and I know it's gonna be something that, that serves my evolution. And so I tend to attract or magnetize people who sign up for my offerings and programs again and again and again. But then there's some people who are like on the sidelines and they'll look at my stuff and say, oh, that's interesting, I really like that. And that's okay, some people will never sign up to work with me and that's totally okay. And it has more to do with a sense of, well, I don't trust that this is gonna be something that I can use or something that's gonna be applicable for me. That has nothing to do with my work. That always has something to do with you trusting you and you trusting the universe because by extension, if you trust you, you trust the universe. That's how it works. It's not the other way around because remember, it's never outside in, it's always inside out. And so maybe you're looking at my transpersonal ascension attunement and like, okay, that's just a bunch of activations. You could say that. You could sum it up that way. Another way to say it would be, it's a profound soul remembrance. 
and how to dig back in and tap back into what the soul wants, because a lot of us have forgotten, or a lot of us have that knowledge as a, as a, as a program, as a download that's coming in all the time. It's, you're being dropped cues and clues and breadcrumbs all over the place from your soul and your intuitive knowing and directly from source all the time. But the ego programming is too loud and it kind of covers it up. It kind of overlays it with what's going on with your ego needs. And so you can't hear it or you can't see it or you can't know it, what the soul wants. And so through the transpersonal ascension attunement, which is six weeks of activations of consciously embodied transmissions from source, it is a profound soul remembrance. This entire container is six weeks of soul remembrance. So a lot of us have come here and we forgot what we're here to do. We forgot what we're really plugged into. We forgot who we really are in our truth. And that we're not just a series of ego projections of where we feel our needs aren't met. We're not that. And we think that's the sum total of who we are sometimes. And we want to create things to make sure that we don't have to feel that way anymore. But what we're really doing when we create at that level is just compensating for those beliefs instead of dismantling the beliefs, dismantling the misperceptions. And that's never going to be wholesome. That's always going to be aligned with lack matrix. So this transpersonal ascension attunement, it's aligning you back in with the truth of what your soul wants, what your soul desires, reminding us that we are here to drive the needle forward towards the service to others paradigm. And I have news for you. You would not have incarnated slash volunteered for this very auspicious timeline on planet Earth if you weren't here to drive this needle forward for the evolution of humanity in your own unique way, you, you simply wouldn't be here. And you certainly wouldn't be on this call for this long. <laughs> you wouldn't still be sticking around and watching me. You would have turned it off and put on something else and went back to scrolling or doing whatever. In your own unique way, and it matters, by the way, you matter, by the way, because you are a very unique, individuated expression of source. You are source consciousness experiencing itself through your own unique identity, with your gifts, your talents, that were all bestowed on you by the divine. They are here to drive life forward in a positive direction, with a positive vision, your negative visions need a revamp. Your negative visions keep plugging you back into the false lack matrix and into a paradigm that is rapidly dissolving. It has no staying power. These manifestations and creations you want to create from that level. No staying power. The only thing that has real staying power that is service to others driven and drives unity consciousness forward on this planet is not only for your best betterment, but for the highest and best good of all. And it's guaranteed that it will have the least amount of resistance for all involved because it is driven by service. And sometimes service just looks like you living your best life. Mm -hmm. So the transpersonal ascension attunement, a profound soul remembrance over six weeks. I can't think of a better way to end 2022. And for the next nine women who join, I have a very special gift for you to also help you remember what your soul wants. And this is a super quick activation. It's only 20 minutes long. This is something exclusively shared in my Lotus Throne initiation which is also a very highly service-driven program that starts in mid-November for spirit-led visionary women in their life and life's work. This is something I share exclusively in there. It's the Golden Mist Activation. 
it's a manifestation tool, but it's so much more than that because it is an exercise in remembering what your soul wants. And to be in that place of soul joy when you interface with that in this activation, you're going to love it. Um, and that's only exclusively available in Lotus Throne Initiation, but for the next nine women who sign up for the Transpersonal Ascension Attunement, I'm going to gift, gift that to you. Um, it is $3.97 for that, and it goes up to $4.97 on the 1st of November. So you get the early bird when you sign up now, and you get this activation, but only for the next nine women who sign up. So I hope this has inspired you. I hope that I have been in service to you from soul to soul, heart to heart, higher self to higher self, God self to God self. I hope that this communication, this level of communion has gifted you with a sense of, of knowing something that you needed to know, something that was meant to come in for you. Thank you for watching this long. And I hope to see you in the Transpersonal Ascension Attunement. Love and peace.